When working in the pediatric cardiac ICU, there are a lot of different monitors with a lot of different numbers to look at. In this video, I'm going to be discussing this one, Near Infrared Spectroscopy, or NEARS for short. I'm going to talk about what it's measuring, what the numbers mean, and how to use this information to assess your patient. So let's get started. I'm not going to go deep into the science of NEARS. There's a Wikipedia page for that. But briefly, NEARS technology measures the oxygen saturation of the blood beneath the probe, which is a sticker placed on the skin. So how is that different than pulse oximetry? Pulse ox technology can only measure pulsatile blood, so it only gives an estimation of arterial saturation. NEARS measures all the blood below the probe, so the saturation in the arteries, capillaries, and veins. Most of our blood is in the veins, and the software algorithm in the box weights the measurements towards the venous saturation. So NEARS is considered an estimation of the venous saturation in the tissues below the probe. NEARS probes can be placed anywhere on the body, but the most common locations in the pediatric cardiac ICU are the forehead and the back. Let's look at this box. By convention, the top number is the forehead probe, C for cerebral, and the bottom number is the back probe, R for renal. There can be other labels, so just remember the top is the head. What should these numbers be if everything is going well with your patient? Let's assume that your patient has two good ventricles and has an arterial oxygen saturation of 100%. Our body is built with redundancies, and our blood delivers four to five times as much oxygen to the tissues as is needed. So if the blood delivered is 100% saturated and 25% is extracted, the venous saturation, and thus the NEARS value, is going to be around 75%. Cerebral NEARS tend to run in the 70s. Should the renal NEARS be the same, higher, or lower than the cerebral NEARS? We call the back probe the renal mirrors, but the infrared light from the probe only penetrates one and a half centimeters at most into the tissue. Picture back. Is your kidney 1.5 centimeters below your skin? Mine certainly is not. And the light probably isn't reaching the kidneys except in our smallest and skinniest of patients. So it's really a back fat probe, or maybe a muscle probe. That's okay, because it is still giving us useful information no matter what we call it. So what should the renal mirrors value be? Does your back fat, or muscle, extract more or less oxygen than your brain. For most of us, our back should extract less of the delivered oxygen, so we expect the renal nearest value will be higher than the cerebral nearest value most of the time. If your patient has single ventricle physiology and cyanosis, both nearest values will be proportionately lower. Now let's think about what happens when things aren't going well. When cardiac output or delivered oxygen starts to drop, our bodies have several compensatory mechanisms that kick in to try to preserve blood flow and oxygen delivery to vital organs. The first is increasing the heart rate. The next is vasoconstricting blood vessels to less important organs, like the skin and subcutaneous tissue on the back. As the vessels constrict, total oxygen delivery decreases, even if the arterial saturation remains the same. The body has to extract a greater percentage of the oxygen delivered to maintain the same total oxygen extraction. The venous saturation in that tissue goes down, the renal nears go down. The body is still trying to preserve flow to the all-important brain, so the cerebral nears stay the same. This pattern of falling renal nears and a stable cerebral nears tells us that the body is redistributing blood flow in response to something. It doesn't tell us exactly what the problem is, but if you see this, you should probably go assess your patient. Now let's look at some examples. This patient presented to the ICU two hours ago with a new diagnosis of myocarditis. We've been resuscitating with a little bit of fluid and ionotropes. Is a resuscitation plan working? Nears are often described as a trend monitor, and that's why the machines graph the values over time. While the absolute cerebral nears number of 62 is not exactly what I expect, the trend of both numbers is increasing, which is what I want to happen. I can look at this and decide my treatment plan is working. This monitor shows a cerebral number in the 70s and a renal in the 60s. Those absolute numbers aren't terrible, but look at the trend of the renal numbers and the renal value is less than the cerebral. We need to go examine this patient. In this case, the patient had an internal hemorrhage causing progressive hypovolemia and anemia. Next example. The cerebral nears are in the 40s, and the renal is 60. Not great. What I also need to know is what the patient's arterial saturation is. Does this patient have single ventricle physiology? Yes. So I'm not going to be too worried about these numbers. Now take the same patient and give them these values. The cerebral nears are actually a bit higher, but renal nears in the 20s are unacceptable for anyone. Again, it doesn't tell me what is wrong. Just that this patient may not have globally adequate oxygen delivery and is having to compensate for that. And last example, this baby has acceptable nears a lot of the time, but what is going on here? Every time the baby gets mad and fusses, the renal nears plummet. This baby's heart is capable of delivering adequate oxygen to the body at rest. 
but can increase cardiac output when the baby's needs increase. The baby may look fine and cute sleeping, but I would consider them high risk for the poop of death.